Basil is one of the most popular herbs to grow because it smells and tastes delightful. It's used for making pesto, all kinds of vinegar, and oils. Plus, it has great health benefits. In aromatherapy, it's used to clarify and energize the brain. Harry Potter fans will appreciate that the word basil comes from the Greek word basilisk, as in the legendary reptile that is controlled by Lord Voldemort. Hi, I'm Amy, founder of Fox Run Environmental Education, where we talk about organic gardening and wildlife conservation. There are many varieties of basil. Think about how you want to use basil in cooking or preserving, and that will help you choose what varieties are best for you. This large leaf Italian variety is great for using fresh in salads, pesto, and on bruschetta, as well as drying for use in winter. It produces edible flowers, which are wonderful for garnishing summer drinks and salad. Genovese is a popular variety. Basils with purple leaves aren't just ornamental. They make a beautiful addition to salads and vinegars and also make a nice filler in bouquets. Purple ruffles is a pretty variety with crinkly serrated leaves, which make it an attractive plant in the garden. A vigorous grower with good disease resistance. They take a bit longer to grow at 85 days to maturity, but are worth the extra time. Bush basil, sometimes called Greek basil, has smaller leaves on a bushy, compact plant. These varieties are great for growing in a container or inside during the winter. They work well for salads, cooking, and pesto. Thai basil has a slightly spicy, some people say licorice flavor. Great for cooking th Southeast Asian dishes like Thai curry. It's often used as a condiment and served on the side so people can flavor their food accordingly. So how much should you plant? Ellen Ogden, who wrote the book, The Complete Kitchen Garden, recommends for a family, plant six plants for pesto, two of the purple leaf varieties for vinegar, plus two scented varieties for oils or vinegars, as well as one leaf type of basil for summer salads and grilling. In addition, if you like Thai or Eastern cuisine, plant Thai basil. And if you are a fish aficionado, plant a lemon or lime basil. Basil is easy to grow and very prolific. You can start basil inside about five weeks before your last frost. Place seeds in 18 trays or two to three inch pots. You can direct sow, but the seeds are small, so you might end up like this picture with lots of plants. But put thinnings in a salad. Fill pots with a light organic seeding mix. Moisten the soil from the bottom. I do this by placing the seedling tray in a bigger tray filled with warm water and letting the soil soak up the water before planting. Place seeds on top of the soil and gently press in about one eighth of an inch. Cover lightly with some pre-moistened soil. Some people like to mix some sand in with their soil to make it lighter. Place seedlings in a warm place. Basil's optimum germination temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Germination takes seven to 10 days Keep the soil moist, but make sure to not overwater. Like many herbs, basil needs only moderate amounts of fertilizer. Plant in well-drained soil that is rich in aged compost. You may not need anything else. If the leaves look a little stressed, spray them with some fish emulsion. Strive for a soil pH between 6.4 and 7.0 and locate your plants in full sun. Basil does well during the heat of the summer. Hopefully this video is providing helpful information thus far. Please boop that like button. Plant basil outside after all danger of frost has passed. 
If you plant early, make sure to cover with row cover. Space plants eight inches apart. You can stagger your planting times to keep you in a variety of basil all year long. Keep your so seedlings moist, but not waterlogged. Drip irrigation works well for basil. Don't water them from the top as cool water hitting the wet leaves can cause black spots. We want beautiful leaves on our basil since that's the part we eat. There is a type of downy mildew that affects basil and thrives in warm, humid environments. So those of you in zone 6B or below need to watch out for this. I use Monterey for fungal disease control. Throw infected plants away. Prevention includes mulching to prevent dirt splatter and watering the soil, not the plant. Snails, aphids, and Japanese beetles will all feast on those tender leaves. Encourage wild birds and use your chickens for bug control. Neem oil is my favorite organic control for pests. Check out the description for links. Just a quick plug for my book, Kick the Grocery Store Goodbye, which is about having a plan to be self-sufficient and have a more productive garden. This one is in the Kindle Unlimited program as well as paperback. Basil has been the subject of many scientific studies which have demonstrated its numerous health benefits. Basil contains many vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. These fight free radicals in the body that can otherwise lead to cell damage and increase your risk for a variety of health issues. According to WebMD, basil has been shown to reduce high blood pressure, sugar levels, reduce inflammation, and help with heart disease. You can make essential oil from basil, which has many physical and mental health benefits. It can help with headaches and clear mucus, as well as helping us feel calmer and more alert. One dental study sh done in Brazil showed improvement in gum health. Another study showed improvement in skin texture. I will link the articles below. Many people love to have herbs indoors during the winter right? Who doesn't? Some nutrients leave herbs during the drying process, so fresh is best. Basil is a great candidate for growing in the house. Sow seeds in midsummer when the days are long. During the winter, your basil will need supplemental light if you want it to produce new leaves. The smaller bush varieties do the best in an indoor environment. Basil is easy to grow in containers and will do fine with a friend. Make sure it gets plenty of sun. Plant basil with tomatoes and green peppers and root crops to ward off aphids, asparagus, carrot flies, tomato hornworms, and white flies. Basil is wonderful as a companion plant and repels many insects. In France, outdoor restaurants often place flowers mixed with basil in table planters to ward off bugs from diners. If you are doing the square foot method, place four plants per square foot. Basil will produce flowers. There is a catch-22. The flowers are great for pollinators and will attract good bugs. However, the plant will put more energy into making flowers than making leaves. You can pinch off the flower buds to encourage leaf growth. Both basil leaves and flowers can be harvested. Pick leaves from the main stems. You can harvest a whole branch by cutting it just above the lower leaf nod. The plant will then produce more stems and become fuller. Harvest leaves mid-morning after the dew has dried from the leaves. Use basil immediately if you can, or place stems in a glass of cold water on the kitchen counter. Don't put basil in the refrigerator, as it will cause discoloration. Basil is easy to dry. After harvesting, the leaves on the stem 
put them together in small bunches of three to five stems, hang upside down somewhere out of the sun for a couple of weeks in a place that has good air circulation. Then you can place whole or crumbled in a glass jar, store in a dark pantry area. You can also dry basil in a solar or electric dehydrator. When using an electric model, put it on the lowest setting. There are so many ways to cook basil. I have recipes on the basil article on my website that you can check out. Basil is a versatile herb and great in so many types of dishes. Add it to tomato or onion soup. Place leaves on your pizza. Chop up leaves and add to your salad. Toasted bread with avocado, basil, and tomato is delicious. Bruschetta with tomato, mozzarella, and basil on French bread. You can tell I like bread. A fun addition to summer liquors such as daiquiris and basil rum fizz. So let's toast basil with a lemon basil cocktail. The recipe is on the website. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you have a wonderful sunny day.